Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Racing Unleashed, where we are back live for another Challenge League event here on the iRacing platform. It is Challenge 2 this week, the first one of April, and to, uh, one that the Racing League drivers will get their hands on in two weeks' time. We're at Watkins Glen in the United States of America in the GT4 car category for today's event. It's a fantastic car category and a fantastic, lovely circuit that we are racing around today. And it should be a brilliant one for these drivers to get the chance to drive some GT4 cars. You remember a month ago, we had the Porsche Cup cars at the Hockenheim ring, which was which brought exciting racing and really good entertainment, especially in the Challenger League with the uh, amount of drivers we had there. This time around, GT4s. So multiple cars could be on the circuit today from the likes of McLarens to Mercedes, AMGs, Porsche, 718 Caymans, Aston Martin Vantages and BMW M4. So there's five different cars to choose from. That is going to be uh, really exciting to see the different car categories going around uh, this famous, famous Watkins Glen circuit. And what a day in store we have for you. A great little race format that we've got for you today. Uh, touring car-esque, if you're a British touring car fan, you might uh, recognise a format very, very similar. And a great circuit to do it on. Here is the first format. It is 10 minutes qualifying, followed by three 20-minute races. Now, race one will be set the grid by that qualifying order. The top uh, race two will be the top 15 will be inverted. So 15th will be pole position, and pole position will be 50, uh, the race winner from race one will be 15th place in that grid. As for race three, three 20-minute races, the winner of the prize money for today will be the person who has scored the most points. And for example, first place points today is 32 points up for offer, then 29, 28, all the way down to one point for that 30th spot. So it is the driver who accumulates the most points over these three races will take the prize money uh, at the end of today. That is the way the format is going to work. It is a fantastic format that, they, uh, that we have on store here for you guys today. And obviously this will be the same format going forward in a couple of weeks time or the Racer League drivers as well. So again, three 20 minute races, top 15 are inverted for race two and three in that grid with a 10 minute qualifying coming up in around about uh, 10 or 15 minutes time. So it's going to be absolutely fantastic. Uh, but we can though now have a look at their word from our ambassador, James Walker thing is awesome. First of all, starting off with the tub, the chassis itself. This is actually handcrafted in Italy and it's designed to simulate effectively what it's like to be in a single-seater environment. Now, when you lower yourself inside here, you are sitting in a real carbon seat, which is very trick indeed. Now, what self-respecting single-seater wouldn't have a removable steering wheel? This also carbon effect, real carbon shifters here, and there is a plethora of tech for you to learn as you go down the racing unleashed journey. Now down there, there's a really trick pedal box. Once again, this is designed to simulate what a brake servo is like on a single seater with high downforce, really stiff, really reassuring. And you can actually adjust the pedal box itself to get your optimum feel. Now then, racing harnesses. This for me is my favorite feature. There is a retention system inside the shell itself which simulates G-force under heavy braking and it can actually replicate up to five Gs of deceleration. It's super immersive and when you try it for the first time, you can't believe how much it adds to the overall immersion of driving a single seater. And then to tie it all together, down here at the back, we've got the hydraulic actuators, and this simulates the lumps and bumps, going over curbs, undulations, and just general movement of the car. All in all, it's one of the best simulator experiences you're going to find anywhere. Thank you there, James, for the words. And uh, for those who want to get involved with the simulators, obviously you need to head over to one of Racing Unleashed's Racing Unleashed Racing Lounges across Munich, Zurich, and uh, Madrid. If you would like to have a go on one of our pieces of equipment, then. Uh, but we can now hear from our CEO and owner, Francisco Fernandez. Dear friends of motorsports, dear sim racing community, I'm Francisco Fernandez, founder and CEO of Racing Unleashed, and I'm thrilled to invite and welcome you to our series. At Racing Unleashed, our goal is to put a dent into the universe of motorsports, breaking down barriers and making motorsports accessible for everyone, everywhere. With our state-of-the-art simulators, we bridge the gap between the virtual world and the physical world of racing. Our racing lounges do not only provide you exposure 
to state-of-the-art technology, but also ensures for fairness in sports, harmonizing software, hardware, to give everybody the same chances to win. Additional to that being the owner of probably the most beautiful and exclusive racing resort in the world, Asgari in southern Spain, I'm dedicated to scout the best talents in sim racing and bring them to the real track and real cars. Join us on this exciting journey and help us to become the most exciting and engaging motorsports in the world. Follow us as we expand our reach coming to the town next to you globally. I'm also dedicated to make sim racing careers true careers for you. This year, we are excited that we've added iRacing to our offering, immersing ourselves even deeper into your hearts. Now you can compete even from the coziness of your own home and race for prize money. So I wish you here with best of luck, may the best win, and I'm looking forward to seeing you again in one of our racing lounges. Thank you very much, Francisco. Thank you there, Francisco, for the words of encouragement for all drivers going forward in this year here at Racing Unleash with free practice coming to a brief end. There's about five minutes left of that. It's interesting to see the cars we have on track, but I don't want to spoil anything for who's in what just yet. We'll get to that in the qualifying session. The results, so from the Racer League last time out at the Hockenheim Ring in the Porsche Cup car are as follows then. It was a great day for Lewis Bellicky then who took home the 200 euros for P1. Mario Velgert was P2, he took home 150 euros and Patrick Thompson P3 took home 100 euros for himself. That was the race results on the podium and the drivers that got a bit of prize money last time out at the Hockenheim ring in the Porsche Cup car. It was fantastic racing and today the prize money for the Challenger League is a race win or I say the race win. To be the outright winner today will bag you 125 euros. If you're second place, you can take home 75 euros and third place will take home 50 euros. And don't forget that is based on the accumulation of points added up by the end of today. Then points going from 32 all the ranging all the way down to one to a driver that with the most points. And if there is a driver that is tied, it will be looked at race results and the best race finish will obviously then be uh, the driver that will get on that top three for the prize money. Uh, just looking at people in the comment section at the moment that Watkins Glen, good track, all the best to the drivers, a few uh, good looks for guys out there on the circuit today and the harness feature is the proper trick need a blast in one of them, uh, indeed they are, they are fantastic simulators to uh, to have a go in, I remember having a few goes last year with absolutely fantastic piece of equipment to uh, to get yourself involved in, so it looks like the uh, the broadcast, it looks like the, uh, the viewers are ready to get some racing underways we have about three minutes left of free practice here, there's uh, a quick split it's not very uh, much in the top 17 drivers here just over a second in the top 18 drivers as we can have a look now at the track uh, explanation if you will for Watkins Glen which is a fantastic little circuit as you can see behind me it is brilliant layout here the Watkins Glen circuit absolutely gorgeous little layout and I am just going to scoot across just a little bit so you can get a full look at that circuit there it is look absolutely fantastic layout and there is a few different layouts of this circuit that drivers can take on obviously we see it used in the nascar uh, a bit throughout the series in, in that one but you come through turn one then which is called the 90 head up right at uh, right 90 degrees pretty much over there use as much of the runoff as you dare on that outside before you come up to the s's you come uphill it is left right left again it turned two three and four real good tricky part of the circuit almost reminds of El rouge not as steep not as tricky but it easily can cause a bit of a pile up for drivers if they get it horribly wrong through that part you then head down onto the back straight great chance to set yourself up through the s's before you hit the loop of five six seven and eight uh, which comes sort of like a bus stop chicane if you will that you see at Daytona and, and places like that it, you come straight through there and to the outer loop then which comes right round to the right hand side sort of cambering down as well short straight back on the brakes for then what is called shoot and again, a chance to really sort of set yourself up, get a good through, run through this part before you then come all the way down towards toe, turn seven, right there. And a good part to get up the inside, overtake, 
keep it tight to that uh, apex as you exit the corner again a good run down on what is called uh, the boots down that straight before heel of turn eight again another chance to get up the inside and have a good run but as well you can set the driver up coming uphill into this tricky section here in which uh, the last three corners don't actually have any names so I can't tell you the names of these last three corners but again turn nine there you see as you come uphill to the left hand a great chance to overtake maybe set yourself up through turn 10 to have a look into 11 and then it's down to the start line and across the line to finish the uh, lap or the race if you will and you could be victorious and you could be uh, one of the drivers that is taking home some prize money today. So it is absolutely fantastic circuit. It is, it is one of America's best circuits, in my opinion. It is a favourite of mine from America, and it is a really, really great track. And these GT4 cars, I tell you what, I had a go on one of the GT4 cars here at the Apex Studio uh, a few weeks ago around Donington Park, and they are fantastic fun to drive. Got their chance to drive the BMW M4. What a little car that is. These are, it's going to be great racing today. We thought the Porsche Cup brought a lot of action. I think these are going to provide us with some fantastic racing as the practice session has just ended and I believe we are heading into that qualifying session now. But here again, look, just some more clips of Watkins Glen so you can get a feel for that scenery and get a feel for what you look at. The uh, the, on, uh, the sort of barrier, the uh, catch fencing really comes up and sort of towers over, leans in towards the circuit a little bit on certain parts and it just gives you a good feel. Here we see from the helicopter camera view then of one of the drivers coming up through the S's here early in this qualifying session. It really is a great layout here at Watkins Glen and it is great to see. I believe we're on board with Simon Demori here who's coming you see, just through that like bus stop sort of chicane takes a lot of curb. You really want to take a lot of curb through these four parts, really, if you will. And then downhill, it drops away from you. Very easy to make a mistake. And you've got to use, again, as Demori is showing here, you have to use a lot of that curb and a lot of that runoff that you can. It's big, thick curbs on the outside here, so you've got to make sure you take advantage of the whole lot. That was a little too much, just dropping two wheels there onto the grass, but it is really about that momentum you carry through these corners as you then, again, climb back uphill, look through toe, down towards the heel, and a great chance on this start straight. A minute 20 to qualify, and there is everybody out on the circuit at the moment, bar one. So everybody on their outlap, and it is Demori, who I believe is the first driver out on the circuit as well. Now, track limits will be uh, a key for drivers to watch here. But again, you can push them limits as much as you dare. And these, you look, the catch fence are just sort of towering over as you come then through towards the penultimate corner. Again, just slightly angles away to the left, using that kerb on the outside, flick it back across to the left. Watch it. This can be a tricky part of the circuit because you, you want to use as much of that outside kerb as you dare, but what you don't want to do is just clip that wall. That'll stop your momentum, damage that car a slight little bit, then as Demori heads down on the racetrack for his first lap time at the moment. Here is a driver that is great. Say, always enjoy seeing Sebastian Hirsch out there on circuit. Great to see him still uh, working hard, obviously, after his... Uh, Go-karting accident two years ago. It is great to see Sebastian Hirsch out there, and uh, he's even got the seat belts attached to his simulator at home. So great to see Sebastian Hirsch on the circuit, down in towards the 90, then he comes. He is in the McLaren um, it's 570 GT4. So it'll be great to see what he can do. Here is uh, Ratiani, again in the McLaren as well. Through the 90, he goes. Now, obviously, the drivers have had an hour's practice session. So we might not be seeing purple sectors pop up on my timing screen, but they'll obviously be setting personal bests for this session, definitely so. Here is uh, Jatatis then. He is in the Mercedes AMG GT4. A great shot of his camera there, pointing towards his monitor. And don't forget, these drivers are possibly live streaming this on their personal accounts at home, so, you know, they might want to give their viewers an immersive feel of what they're uh, doing as well, Ford Tatis just coming through that middle sector. Marcus Valverde, the uh, Challenge League runner-up last season, if you remember. He's in the Mercedes AMG GT3 as well, uh, GT4 as well. It's just going to be interesting to see what Marcus Valverde can do as he comes down into uh, the heel. 
He'll have to climb back uphill. A lot of runoff they use. I'm not sure where the exact track limits are for that part of the corner, but I'm sure the drivers are going to be pushing them as far as they are allowed to and as far as they are aware of. So for Valverde, he's looking to get a lap time on the board. Demori has put the first lap time on the board. He's at a 53.359. Pascal Schott, previous winner. Last time out, he's gone within seven tenths of a second. A few times coming in. Valverde, though, he's coming across the line at the moment and is going to set a lap time of uh, P5. That was currently a 154.183. Here comes uh, Sepanian then. Obviously, we saw the driver out there last time as well, and Sapanian goes 15th place with a 205-1. So not the best opening lap for Sapanian, but as you see there, Demoria, 153-394, and driver's lap time's coming in thick and fast at the moment so far. Driver's still setting personal best lap times as they come through the sectors. And Matty Hanper then. Coming through the penultimate corner, again, using all that runoff he did. How close to the wall will he get on the outside at the moment? Watching him so far, hasn't set any green sector times. But again, that could be set up on the timing screen due to practice. So we'll see what they do as he crosses the line and moves himself into P23. Does Hapanya there then? Two drivers on a lap, yet to set one at the moment. They are coming towards the end of the lap, though. And here is one of the drivers. It is Sinan de Merbas. Again, a Racer League driver from last season for the regular viewers here at Racing Unleashed. He's coming through the toe. And up he climbs down the uh, straight of the boot. Before heading to heel, Sinan de Merbas, currently fifth fastest out on the circuit. 0.589 off the back of Demori. So Demori's had a great start to this qualifying session. We're halfway through it as well. It is a pretty long lap, nearly two minutes a lap. So the drivers have to get lap times in thick and fast if they're wanting to uh, make sure they get as many lap times on the board. Two drivers still out there yet to set a lap time. That is Torres and Caserta then. But this is Sinan de Merbas, who's currently coming in towards the final corner now. P5 at the moment. Will he see an improvement so far? Demori has gone to pit lane. Jatatis moves himself up into P3 on the timing screens as well. Here comes Sinan de Merbas. Drop down to P6. Any improvement there? No. He drops as well now down to 7th as Augustin Torlachi moves up the order. Here is your last time winner, Pascal Schopp then, who did really well in the Porsche Cup car. Uh, Sepanian. Pekka Sapanian then moves into P2. Just a tenth off of the back at the moment. Uh, Ratiani has moved up into third place. Here is Pascal Schopp down in 12th place at the moment. The Swiss driver. Great to see a variety of nationalities out there as well on the circuit today. So Sap uh, Schopp at the moment coming through into the middle sector now. And he's going to look to uh, try and pick up a bit of time, just looking at his sector times. Green through sector two, green through sector three, it's saying on my timing screen. Short sectors here. And driver setting lap time, setting personal best. No one moving up the order. Matty uh, Hamper then has moved up to P11. So knocking Pascal Schopp down to 13th place as he comes down the shoe. Here is Augustin Torlachi in his Porsche 718 Cayman GT4 car. Not a lot of Porsches out there today. There is only the two, Augustin Torlachi and Jack Badger. Gianluca Palmizano is running in the Aston. Sorry, there's three as well. Torres, who is currently yet to set a lap time. He is running the Porsche as well. Gianluca Palmizano, the only Aston Martin driver. And the only BMW driver is Marco Hack. So we'll see what he can do. Augustin Torlachi, though, out there on the circuit at the moment. Pascal Schopp is coming towards the end of his lap. We'll see if he improves on the timing screen. He crosses the line now, but stays P13. So it did not improve. Augustin Tall, he did improve, sorry. Just moved up the order now as it updates to P9. Daniel Muth as well moves up to P10 for his troubles. Augustin Tall actually rounds the final corner and down the start straight. Augustin comes now, currently P7, and he's only th uh, three tenths off the back of the pole position. And he moves him. No, De Merbas is the one who's moved up to P6. Tall actually drops down to P8. Here is Mishka Berger then. That is the driver who has just moved up a few places. No, he's down in 20 seconds. Sorry, that was Muth who'd moved up a few places. So Torres still yet to set a lap time at the moment. For your headset on there for Zootweller. Coming through towards the penultimate corner now. The privateer driver. P20 at the minute. Jean Zootweller 
from the Netherlands then into the final corner, just looking at his sector times. It's, it's OK, it's not bad. Is there room for a little bit of improvement? He only needs a thousandth of a second to go ahead of Borja Zazo. And as the timing screen updates, I believe he doesn't find that time. No, it was a little slower there at the end. So drivers putting the lap times in thick and fast here at the moment then. And what a gap this is, by the way. The top 20 cars separated by one second here. Here is Jack Badger, the driver from the United Kingdom. He had a good run out. For Al Free Sports last time in the Porsche Cup cars. He's in the Porsche game and today's down in 14th place at the moment. And he's coming through to try and improve on his lap time. He's only six tenths off the pole. So a couple of tenths here and he'll find himself running in that top five, if not in that uh, pole position spot, if you can find all six tenths. And you saw him there through the loop. You're really attacking all four parts of the kerbs. Car number 17. For Jack Badger today. So it's going to be interesting to see what uh, these drivers will be doing. As this is uh, Marco Hack to the line then. And that is it for qualifying. It is done. He did improve though to 15th place at the very end. And we have our grid order so qualifying thick and fast there not many lap times in for qualifying there due to the nature of this circuit being so long in terms of uh, lap time here but it is simon demori who is pole position literally just over a tenth from vlad uh tokarev in p2 pekka sapanian p3 Ayaretiani in p4 sebastian hirsch p5 sinanta mirbas in sixth jatetis in p7 torlachi is p8 uh, Kovacs P9 with Shop P10, Daniel Muth and Tim Bellicky rounding out the top 12. Uh, Matty Hanper then in P13, Jack Badger 14th place, Marco Hack in 15th, Miguel Gutierrez 16th place, Marcus Valverde down his 17th ahead of Borgia Zazo. Then it is Castretta 19th, Andrea. Uh, can't quite read the name from this screen from here where I am, sorry, there. So that is uh, Kaline Kalinesu. Again, apologies if I mispronounce your names. Do get in touch with me if I have. He's running P20. Zotweller in 21st. Berger 22nd. But Gianluca Palmisano down in 23rd. And Thomas Herzog 24th. Uh, 25th is Torres and Galtsev P26, who did not take part in the qualifying session. I don't believe we saw them two out on the circuit. So GT4s will lead to a rolling start then. As we've seen a few more comments come in. Great circuit, says Simplay Motorsport. Good luck to uh, Andre from the Triple S Racing Team. The team are behind him and watching and hoping for a good race. Nice circuit. The drivers are incredible. Let's go, uh, Andre, as well in the chat. And let's go, Sinan, says Rob, in the chat as well. So a lot of drivers, a lot of audience members cheering on. They have their drivers that they want to win this race. And this is race one. It is a 20-minute timed race once again, and it will go from grid position. The safety car will lead them away. And this is all a short formation lap, rolling start because we are in GT4. As the drivers will be preparing to go, it's a fairly bunched grid. This is, I tell you what, this is fantastic to see. And uh, one second covered the top 17. This could be great racing. Good afternoon to Ciro Zambra there as well. So it is McLaren, McLaren. McLaren, 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 your top six. As they all file into order. Sorry, top five, apologies. There's a Mercedes separating one of the McLarens. As they jockey for position, going side by side, down towards the final corner. Rolling start, then. We're seeing here at Watkins Glen. And it is Demori. Who will be the first man to get them underway. And we are now... Green? Yes, we are green now for the start of this race. And demori has got an absolutely brilliant start. Really left them for dust coming out of the final corner. Did not wait for the part there. He just rocketed off. And away he went. And everybody through turn one nice and cleanly up through the S as we go now. There's a few in the background you see side by side coming up through the S's as there is up the foreground as well. And look at this. Great moves. There's Jack Badger then trying to get up ahead of a few drivers. He was down the order in the qualifying session. You see a lot of cars going side by side further forward already. A few flashes 
flashes of the lights as they come into the loop for the first time. Simon Damori is your race leader at the moment, coming into the loop, and there's a car, and I believe that is the Russian driver of Tukok, uh, Tukok, yeah, Tokrev, sorry. His name was tumbling that fast, I couldn't read it. That was sideways through the loop and has tumbled down the standings right into the wall. That could spell disaster. He's out of this race. He has returned to the pit lane. So that is the end of his first race. What a disastrous start for him. Dropped it all on his own. But Damori and Sapanian starting to check out up front. Jack Badger attacking Daniel Muth then into the inside line then for the heel, for the toe, sorry, as they come onto the boot straight now. And he gets the job done. Jack Badger Badger moves himself up into P11. He's really charging at the moment. The highest place has gained so far. Three places for Jack Badger. But it is Damori who leads from Sapanian. Half a second is that gap. And you see all the drivers filtering in behind. Ratiani trying to pull away from Sebastian Hirsch, who's just been overtaken by Sinan Demirbas in the background. And here is Demirbas, who's got past his fellow Munich driver in Sebastian Hirsch. And another driver in the background has lost it all on his own. Maddie's Muth, who has bounced off the wall nose first. He's carrying on going, but that has tumbled him down the standings here and not the way he wanted this race to go. Sebastian Hirsch now trying to defend from Jatatis and Augustin Torlacci as Sinan Demirbas is just pulling a bit of a gap ahead of him in this uh, early stages of the race. Here comes Torlacci looking up the inside of uh, Jatatis and, and gets the move done through the 90. Great overtake from Torlacci there. He pulled out and sent it up the inside. Sebastian Hirsch has a bit of breathing space as they're all battling behind. Uh, Kovacs as well is trying to come past Jatatis up through the S's. Great side-by-side -side action. Porsche, McLaren and Mercedes all fighting it out there and Jatatis drops down yet another place. He is down one now in this race. And who's that now trying to attack the rear of Jatatis? That is shot then as Kovacs there made a little mistake through the loop. That's allowed Jatatis to have a bit of a look on the outside line coming through the outer loop. Maybe setting himself up or turn nine now as the nose chopped off and chop shops nose off there as well. Now on the inside, who's that? That's Sebastian Hirsch mistake all on his own. Drivers have had to avoid him there. And that, I think, is disastrous for Jatatis there, who's had to avoid the back of Sebastian Hirsch bouncing off the wall. And that has put him down the order. Now Hirsch, with a potential bit of damage, has got a fight to come back through the field and back to the front. But we're seeing drivers make their own mistakes at the moment. And it is Berger who he moves up to P17. Hirsch, well, helpless now, maybe suffering with a bit of damage on that car. And he's not able to, he's, well, he's got to recover. He's still got a good 17, uh, 16 and a half minutes to recover in this race at the moment. Damori has the fastest lap of the race, 156.7, building his gap now to seven tenths of a second. So Damori looking good value for money at the moment. Sapanian second place, still quite a way ahead of Ritiani. And Demirbas currently now P4 with Torlachi in P5. Then it is Kovac, Shop, Beliki, Badger, Hanpet, Hack, Gutierrez, Valverde, Ditatis, and Caserta who will round out the top 15 and it will be inverted in that second race. Here is Gutierrez coming through the 90 up towards the S's now in his Mercedes AMG GT4. And Pascal Shop now coming under pressure from Beliki behind. He's gone defensive here a shot in towards the loop. How much curve does he take right across the wall? Get as close to that barrier as you dare. Just try not to make contact with it. And here is Sebastian Hirsch once again trying to attack now the back of Thomas Herzog. Great to see Thomas Herzog back on the Racing on these channel. We can now show you a few replays here. This was the loop, and I believe this was the mistake all on the own, all on his own for the driver who was retired from the race. That of uh, Tokarev, sorry, just drops the rear into the wall. Great overtake around the outside of the loop. Contact made, though, you see there on the Mercedes-Benz. That was actually after the Tokarev, so we didn't actually see that one develop. Here is Move dropping it all on his own into the wall. Oh, just clipped the Porsche there as he bounces off the wall. So a bit of drama already. Sebastian Hirsch with damage, you see, on the rear bumper, bottom right of his car. Now trying to attack... Thomas Herzog in front, Gutierrez, P12 at the moment on the back of Hack. 
say on the back of fact there's a great train a good gaggle of cars and this is what these gt4 cars bring as he comes through the penultimate corner now is he just waiting for the driver in front to make a mistake he's not quite close enough at the moment to have a go at anybody sapanian has got that gap back down to six tenths of a second but here's the battle for tenth one and a half seconds separating tenth to 14th downhill a quarter of the way through this race Gutierrez up four places we've had a great start to his race Jack Badger's up five so he's the man who's really capitalized on a good good start and a good bit of racing here better race pace and qualifying pace for Jack Badger we're currently watching Gutierrez and here is shot once again defending from Beliki in the background you see right all over the back of his mercedes amg gt4 is the mclaren 570 escort and doing a great job so far of doing exactly what he needs to do and shop race winner if you remember in fact the overall winner of the challenger league i racing event one in the porsche cup cars at hockenheim ring Great start to this GT4 action. Two more races coming up. It, top 15 inverted, don't forget. So it's the top 15 from this race that are inverted for race two. And there is Marco Hack, whose camera bouncing all over the place as he uh, turns through the toe. Another driver with a VR headset down in towards heel now as they come back uphill. Vlos Palmisano, Muth Torres, have retired as well. We've lost the only Aston Martin GT4 out there, so four retirements at the moment. Hopefully we get to see them back out there for that second race. Palmazano is actually on pit exit, so we'll have to be careful soon because obviously he's going to be a lap down to the leaders. In which that lead gap is eight tenths of a second. The gap after that is 2.3 from Sepanian to Rittiani. Here's Caserta. 15th place this will be the last driver at the moment who will be on pole for race two if it was to stay like this so far Caserta using all the runoff available to him up oh, through the S's very easy to make a mistake up there Pascal shot once again defending early this from Bellica who's probably got alongside him enough now that is as well Kovacs in front that is Palmazano staying out the way shop defends that inside line now he's on the outside outside again he'll have the inside for the next part great bit of racing from Bellica there and shop absolutely fantastic to see from the pair of them Jack Badger now wants to get involved he's going to try and tuck up that right hand side of the McLaren I don't think he did in the end so great to see bit of action through the uh, the loop there really great racing from the pair of them the mclaren and the mercedes driver with jack badger in the porsche trying to get involved as well shop just a little wide drifting out slightly mid corner and already on the defensive again seventh place at the minute for pascal shop to mori out front's got over a second lead now so he's really starting to put the bit between his teeth and pull away burger's got ahead of zoot weller and now look at Jack Badger from the back of Pascal Shop. Jack Badger trying to attack that of Beliki. And again, thinks better of it around the outside, trying to keep the nose just there. Tucks back in behind now. As they come through the penultimate corner, Jack Badger starting to attack. And is this his pace or is this the fact that Shop is giving him this opportunity to attack the McLaren? shop just doesn't get the exit from the corner doesn't get the traction he's already on the defensive maneuvers in towards turn one Belicky looking around the outside tries to break earlier and cut back underneath he's having a look but I don't think he got the exit that time shop uses all his experience to run out wide and managed to keep hold of p7 so far Jack Badger watching on though as he comes up through the S's look at the slipstream the Porsche Cayman's got here over the McLaren, a double toe, if you will. This could be three wide coming down towards the loop. He pulls out the slipstream now. Beliki still sticking to the back of that Mercedes. Badger breaks earlier, comes through. Whoa, nearly clipping the barrier on the right-hand side there. Using all the curb available to him. And great driving from the three of them. Who's this? This is Thomas Herzog. He's up five places. He's got Sebastian Hirsch just behind him. And he's attacking... 
the back of the Mercedes in front of PAT and he's drifted a little wide and that is shot in the wall. So I'm not sure what's happened there, but Pascal Sharp tumbles down to 11th place and now Belik he's got through, so has Badger, as well as Hack and Hamper. Marcus Valverde has gone up the inside of Caserta there, that's put him up into 13th place. He's on the back of Jotatis and Pascal Schott now then. So what happened to Schott there? Did Sebastian Hirsch get past Thomas Herzog? He did. That was for 18th and 19th place. And Marcus Valverde working his way up the order. And the top three look pretty dead set here. 11 minutes, 13 seconds through the race. Here is Ratiani in P3. He's got a comfortable one and a half second gap back to Sinan de Merbas. He's 2.9 behind that of Pekka Sepanyan. Ratiani down the start straight in towards turn one. Here is Sinan de Merbas. This is the sixth lap for these drivers. He's got Augustin Torlachi just behind him. And behind him is uh, Kovacs. But here is uh, Marco Hack, the solo BMW driver on the grid today with the VR headset on, trying to hunt down after Hapania, Badger, and Balaki. Then, as he managed to get past Shop as well after Shop's dramas. So far, so good. For De Mori, seven tenths of a second out front. Booth has come back out the pit lane. That is great to see. That was a driver off. And that is Berger. Made a mistake through the loop all on his own. And he's tumbled out of that top 15 standings then. Zoot Weller now comes into that top 15 place. Sebastian Hirsch and Thomas Herzog and Borges also all making moves. So for Andre, did he make a mistake? He's tumbled down to P20. Booth back out on circuit. Here is Chitatis on the back of Pascal's shop. Who hasn't had to the outright pace that he had in the Porsche Cup cars back a few months, uh, a few weeks ago, should I say. In towards the toe now. At the heel. Uphill. It's a good gaggle of cars just here. One mistake from these drivers, they could easily... Drop out of that uh, top 15, Borges Zorzo has now got himself out of Thomas Herzog. They're still side by side, Thomas Herzog still fighting hard with Borges Zorzo. These two would have raced each other a lot last season. And Zorzo round the outside of Thomas Herzog. Good move for Borges. And through he goes. So Palmazano currently a lap down on the field, but it's track time for him. Muth is back out on the circuit as well. Here is Tim Belicky with Badger on the back of him. They're catching on to the back of Kovacs here. So Belicky taking uh, Badger with him. Jet Badger's Porsche doesn't seem to have the outright pace compared to Belicky, but he's been able to stick roundabout within that second mark and now can just think of putting him under some pressure as they come a little closer again to traffic of Kovacs in his McLaren 570S down the hill of Watkins Glen they come once again Valiki the driver on board with the German driver in the number 222 car up five spots in this race Jack Badges gained six so is Utwella and Misha Berger then And we're nearly three quarters of the way through this race. So this is going to be great to see Belike on the back of Kovacs. He's got Jack Badger with him. Who's that lad? Is Hapanya? Oh, sorry, Hamper in the background. Who is just lurking here and possibly making a, a move or two. He's also in the McLaren. It's the McLaren GT4. The dominant car of choice, you see all the Mercedes just down the order a little bit. A couple of Porsches running up the order. Muth as well here. It's great to see Muth come out of the pits, because the point to make about Muth then is if he can get on that same lap as Gutierrez, 
you know, he will then overtake Gutierrez. That is a couple more points to play with, just in case he has a better race two and three for that championship. Now Pascal Schopp coming under pressure from Jatatis. They've got on the back of the solo BMW of Hack then, and they're side by side coming through the 90. That is Valverde watching on just behind, as is Caserta. And Pascal Schopp once again finds himself under some immense pressure up through the S's towards the loop. This is where it went wrong last time for him. Marcus Valverde is pretty pretty much pushing Jatatis up through the S's and Valverde already goes to the racing line Shop defends now Jatatis pulls across as well Shop leaves that cause with later on the brakes from Pascal Shop through he goes on the loop and no moves made there but Beliki is side by side with Kovacs coming through the outer loop they've got Hamper on the back of them. Jack Badger is going to try and follow through like he did against uh, Pascal Shop. A bit of contact there from Badger and Kovacs, but Badger does get the place done. Not yet, it's finished though. It is now. So move complete for Jack Badger. And that puts him up to P7. Better keep running in P6. Hamper then is also on the back of Kovacs. And then just behind this, you've got the Shop Jatatis Valverde battle. As Kovacs looks to come back on Badger, but Badger manages to get it done. Shop defending. Hack in the BMW, the cork in the bottle at the moment. We'll see if we can see a few more replays while the action goes on. So this is Sebastian Hirsch. Ah, contact was made. Not sure who that is with. That is Torres, and that is Gianluca Palmisano, who's been hit twice there by Torres. So that is why they both return to the pit lane. And this one is Shop all on his own look had a little moment the rear stepped out glances the wall and that's why he lost a few places there oh and look at that that uh, was how andre uh, fell down the order as well just clipped the wall who's this this is Demori. it's a spanion now has got right on the back of him with the last three minutes to go saving himself for the end maybe and Demore, who put it on pole, pretty much looking lights to flag. Well, it's not that way anymore. Muth has now got past Gutierrez because of the pits. Because uh, Gutierrez is in the pit, so that puts Muth up an extra place. So that'll give him a couple more points. Shop still on the back of Hack. Caserta has got past Valverde. Borja Zorzo has got past Sebastian Hirsch on the timing screens. But it's the battle for li the lead, and it will be one lap to go as we come to the line. So this is the penultimate lap of the race. belicky has got ahead of Badger. So them two exchanging places as well down the order for sixth and seventh. But it is Sepanian putting pressure on Demori in this race. Late on as well. He's left this really late. The gap was opened up to a second and a half a moment ago and now he's, he's come back in this one so I wonder if there's been a mistake from Demori somewhere drove a good qualifying he's drove a great race so far has Simon Demori still battles wavering on then as we come to the line there is one to go here in this first race Demori has one lap to make sure that he takes home 32 points in this first race. Just looking at the timing screens, there is a good gaggle of cars here. Jack Badger, Beliki, Kovacs as well with her, her Hamper in a good fight. Then you've got Hack, Sharp, Tatatis, Caserta, Valverde's dropped off the back of that fight. Here comes Sepanian, just thought about maybe having a look. Putting Demori under a bit of pressure. Down the hill they come. Demori, Sepanian, last lap of the race. And bear in mind, points mean prizes at the end of the, at the end of today. So, bag them points is, is 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 as important as can be, especially in this first and second race. If this is race three and he needs a race win to get it done, maybe a bit different. But what has happened to Pascal Shop? He's dropped down two places. Tatis and Caserta have both got past him. That is coming through the loop and outer loop that he's made the mistake. So not sure what has happened to Pascal's shot there, but he's dropped down a couple of places. 
And that is going to ruin his chances of a, a good point scoring position. But it'll put him at the front for race two. Top 15 inverted, let's not forget. So Damori comes through now towards the penultimate corner to take the chequered flag. He's just got two corners to get absolutely spot on. And he nails the penultimate one. He's got a bit of breathing space. Sapanian now maybe is thinking of taking the points for P2. He is not close enough. Damori will take lights to flag. It's been a great first race for Simon Damori. He'll take the first race win. Sapanian second place with Ritiani in P3. Sinan Demirbas fourth being caught by Augustin Torlacci for P5. Then it is Belike just coming home from Badger and that of Kovacs at hand per P9. Hack will just hang on to P10 ahead of Jatetis. P12, Caserta, Shop 13th, Valverde 14th, Zoot Weller P15. Them 15 will be inverted, they'll be switched around. Uh, Berger 16th, Zarjo 17th, who is yet to cross the line. He crosses the line now, Sebastian Hirsch uh, will come across P18 as well. What a race, great drama. A lot of drivers there making their own mistakes and losing places on their own. We saw three drivers not take the chequered flag there as well. So some good action and again, the top 15. So Damori, who won that last race, will be starting from P15 in race two. Um, so the grid will actually be Zutwell of Valverde, Shop, Caserta, Jitatis Hack, Hanper, Kovacs, Badger, Beliki, Torlachi, Demirbas, Ritiani, Sapanian, Demori, and then as finished on the grid order below them. So the top 15 switched around. Demori now. 32 points to his name. He's got a lot to do if he wants to try and take the race win. Here is the grid order for this second race, and it is Zutuela from Marcus Valverde, Pascal Schopp and Marcelo Caserta, Jatetis and Hack, Hapan, uh, Hap, Hamper and Kovacs, Jack Badger from Tim Beliki, Augustin Torlachi, Sinan de Merbas rounding up the top 12. Ratiani from Sepanian then will be 13th and 14th. 15th place will be that of Damori. Misha Berger, P16 with Borges Zazo, Sebastian Hirsch. Kalensu will be P19. Thomas Herzog, 20th. Gianluca Palmizano, uh, 21st. Daniel Muth, 22nd. Miguel Gutierrez, uh, G Torres, then Tokarev and Galtsev, who we didn't actually see take to the start of that race either. So hopefully we get to see Galtsev take to the start of race two, but a great start to today. It's in play motorsport, some great racing, great track respect as well. It was fantastic track respect. And, and again, to add to that, it was driver mistakes that was really costing them the positions in this one. So don't forget, for Damori, 32 points he will take to his name and will technically be the leader in the championship, if you will, for today. It is three races. The driver with the most points today will Take home the first place prize money. That prize money, of course, going back to 125 euros, 75 euros for second, and third will take home 50 euros then. So this is going to be great to see. The start of this race, the safety car peels off and into pit lane. It will be Zutweller to take them away on the line. And we are green and go here for race two then at Watkins Glen and Zutweller already with a good start. This is uh, Pascal Shop looking up the inside of Marcus Valverde already moving into P2. A lot of Mercedes at the front of the order now. Oh, this carnage this time around and it's the BMW involved. Three or four drivers, multiple now, have gone off up towards the S's. It is a big pile up. I see Augustin Torlacci has been involved in that one. That looks like Thomas Herzog as well. So chaos at the start of race one. But it is these six that have all got away relatively cleanly. And it is Zutwella from Shop, from Valverde, Chitatis, Hapanya, Badger, to Merbas, uh, the seven that have got away. And that is Zutwella who's had a moment through the loop. And now Pascal Shop leads from Marcus Valverde. Where's Demori in all of this? We've lost Caserta and Kovacs. They've gone back to the pits. So they have retired from this race. They can come back out if they uh, want to, but Simon Damori, race one winner, how it has turned on his head, and who's this now, contact again, that is just behind Jack Padger, that is Hanper in the wall, and he is retired, Hanper retires from the race, 
Shop has also crashed from the race lead, being told P60 now is Valverde leads this race. Well, the comment of great racing, great track respect out the window, lap one. It is gloves off here. Full touring car style in this second race of the day. GT4's at Watkins Glen, and it is a Mercedes 1-2-3. You don't hear that very often anymore, but it is Valverde from Zutwell Agitators, P3, Badger, P4, had a great race one. And because of this point system, Jack Badger at the moment, probably sitting in the best position with a great first race, I think he finished about sixth, is now in a good, strong position here in race two. So it is Mercedes, 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 Porsche, McLaren. That McLaren is to Merbas. He was fourth, now fifth. So he's in a great spot as well. Here is Muth coming down the start line. You see him side by side, not quite sure who that is. Sepanian's in the pit lane. And there is another car entering pit lane. That is Ratiani. So that is their race possibly done. That is Muth ahead of Augustin Torlacci. So the top 15 will be rolls reversed again. And at the minute, Beliki is in that spot. We have lost Berger, Kovacs, Hamper, Caserta, Damori's in pit lane. Sepanian's in pit lane, Rettiani's in pit lane. And here's Zutwella going side by side with Jotatus. Jack Badger watching on, thinking of following the car on the inside line through. And I believe he's following through that of Zutwella. Down towards the uh, shoot corner. Jack Badger's gone a little wide. That has allowed uh, Sinan to Merbas up a couple of places. This is great driving. Zutwella, Badger, Jatatis to Merbas. Four for second place. This is what a fight at the moment. As they're three wide coming in towards the hill. A great respect, Gio. Not a slight bit of contact. And they're all going to come through. Jack Badger's the one who loses out. To Merbas trying to get into P3 around the outside of Zutwella. Can he keep his McLaren there? Right around the outside, Sinan to Merbas. Great manoeuvre. Jack Badger now wants to try and follow through. And Sinan now puts himself on the podium at the moment. Valverde's two and a half seconds up the road. So he's had the start he needs here. Damori down in 21st, so your race winner of race one, having a shocker. Here comes Sinan to Merbas. He's going to get past Jatatis. He's already through before turn one. Jatatis then a little slow as well, because now Zutwell is going to look up the inside. Small bit of rubbing there between the two Mercedes. Jack Badger fancies following through, and he's going to try to the outside of Zutwell up through the S as they come now. Only four minutes into this race, a lot of drama has happened, and Zutwell loses out to Jack Badger. Absolutely brilliant manoeuvre there. Uh, and Racing Unleashed in the comments, P4 was to Burbas in Heat 1. He's now running P2. So it is absolutely fantastic. And incidents get looked at as the race goes on. There is in-game penalties to be given. As this is now Tokarev, who retired in race 1. He's running P7, so points on the board for him. So there is penalties to be given in the race. But uh, Vlad Tokarev up 18 spots at the moment. Absolutely fantastic. Gianluca Palmazano and his Aston Martin's currently running P11. Here is Valverde, though, up one spot. Leads this race, 2.8 seconds. Clear of Sinan de Merbez. It is Tokarev who has the fastest lap of the race with a 153.472. Uh, the top 15 was reversed from race one, so it was 15th was pole, and the winner dropped down to 15th place. And this is going to spice things up for race winner, but I tell you what, oh, for, for, for Marcus Valverde, he's really done well. There is a 30-second stop-go penalty for Caserta. Incident on lap one, turn one. He's out the race, so he will not serve that stop-go penalty. He has retired. So that answers your question, Simplay Motorsport. Penalties given in race, and we can take a look at a few replays. We can all breathe for a few moments. This was the start of the race, though. This is Jack Badger, and a bit of contact there as the McLaren looked like it turned in on him. That then had a domino effect with other cars. Another instant with the BMW again, look, just bouncing off other drivers, and bang, a lot of them in the wall. This is... Uh, 
Right, so this is the BMW on the outside. Hack, just a little shoulder to shoulder, rubbing with the Mercedes, and he spins the Mercedes round. He comes back on circuit, hits the McLaren. And when there's nowhere to go, it is absolutely mental, absolute chaos for the drivers there. So, big incident, but this man, Marcus Valverde, leads the race. Jack Badger pressuring the back of Jatatis, P4 and 3 at the moment. So, not only did Sinan Demirbas have a good race one, he's currently second place, but Jack Badger, I think, was P6. He's running fourth. So, realistically, could it be between them two in that third and final race? To Mori, your race winner last time out is P21. He's not even going to be in contention for that top 15 flip in race three. Seven minutes through this race. What action packed drama we've had here today. And don't forget the Racer League boys are going to try this one in two weeks' time. Here's Torres up in P9. He's up 15 spots himself. He's had a good little race so far. Managed to keep out of trouble. And he's on the back of the Mercedes AMG. I see some Porsches out there on the shack, on the uh, track today. Shout out for Jack Badger, only 16 years old. Much more to come from this young driver. Indeed, fantastic performance from the youngster then, from the United Kingdom. He's having a great performance, and here it, there he is, look, on the back of Jatatis. Down the start straight, Jatatis defends the inside. Jack Badger thinks I'm going to come fully across to the inside line. Later on the brakes, the Porsche came and moves on to the podium. Jack Badger, who just as we give him a shout-out, runs a little wide on the exit. Jatatis will come back through, and now he's got the outside line. Can Badger hold it there? No, he can't. He tucks back in. But Jack Badger, just as we shout him out, absolute fantastic move to come up the inside, he gets the run up through the S's though, now in towards the loop, he comes, he's going to go to that outside line, we saw, 16 years old, but such a wise head on young shoulders, to just patiently wait for these opportunities, oh look at this for a scrap, Gianluca Palmisano, Augustin Torlacci, Sebastian Hirsch, Borges also, these guys would have fought each other all last season, in the Racing Unleashed Assetto Corsa Championship last year, and they're four here, for 12, 11th, 12th, 13th and 14th place. What a bit of racing this is. Gianluca Palmisano, the only Aston Martin Vantage driver out there today. Brilliant to see. Oh, little bit of lag there for Palmisano. Nothing to worry about. He came back. Here is uh, Andre then. Berger's on pit exit, so he's now going to gain a couple of places because of the fact he's coming out of the pits. Jatatis having to defend that inside line as here comes Badger around the outside. He's got a little wide there, though. Keeps it side by side. He's going to have the inside as they come up the hill through the left hander. Jack Badger on the inside. Does he get the move done? Just about. They're still together as they come towards the penultimate corner. Absolute fantastic driving. Little bump but there from both the cars. But Jack Badger moves up to P3. That is a tire drive through penalty, Sinan de Merbas causing an incident on lap one at the shoot, so Sinan is in, and that ruins his chances from P2 in the race, he's tumbling down the order, Jack Badger now sits second place, and he's the man you have to look at as taking full points here, I hope de Merbas wasn't pulling into his pit box here, because he looked like he was about to, is now Muth attacking the back of uh, Andre here then, a triple S racing car. Coming up, De Merbas in the pits. I believe he's possibly pot tied up in the pits. I believe he's called that one a day he has, yeah. So a drive through penalty, and he sat in the pit lane. Oh, it's gone wrong for Sinan. It has gone wrong for Sinan. What an absolute shame that is. Was looking so good, but Jack Badger now is the man who's potentially going to be leading this uh, little standings after the end of this race. Sixteen years of age. What a performance. There's Jack Badger then, trying to hold off to take to Zutweller. Isn't far away in the background, neither is Pascal Shop. Through they all come down towards the hill, 11 minutes on the clock, we're on lap five, about to start lap six is Marcus Valverde, he's gone, 
He's checked out. Demirbas is on pit exit. I think he's thought he's had a stop-go penalty. Valverde, with all this fighting behind him, and now that Sinan's not there, has checked out. Tokarev, uh, still the fastest lap of the race at the moment. Let's take a look at what Sinan got the uh, penalty for. Ah, we saw the contact live. This was Shop having his own moment. Oh, he's dropped the rear again. Bang! Backwards into the wall, loses the rear bumper. Interesting. So through comes Jack Badger, currently second place. Still Tokarev with that fastest lap. Here is Muth on the back of Andri. Up 13 places in the Mercedes-Benz. Had that mistake in race one, so he's got to try and bounce back here in the second race. Been some great GT4 action today. Really has been fantastic. He pulls to the outside now. He's getting on alongside his fellow Mercedes driver. He's going to be on the outside, though, for the first part of the loop. Gets it through. Yes, he does. Great move. Managers now to hang on. He has that inside line, not the momentum through the corner he'd want. Has he lost out a bit, though? Still together, side by side, back down the hill. Move will be on the outside line, coming through the chute. Just a little bit of exchanging body paint there. Muth still on that outside line. This has been through the loop. They've been side by side. Now coming into toe. Muth gets that move complete. And with 13 minutes nearly on the clock, Muth moves up to P8. Fantastic drive. So your race order at the moment is Marcus Valverde, four seconds clear of Jack Badger. He's only six tenths ahead of Jutatis. Within a second is Zoot Weller out front. Then it is Pascal Shop who's right on the back of him. Tokarev, P6, he's within two tenths of Pascal Shop. G Torres is seventh, been in no man's land. Then it's this fight of Muth and uh, Andri then. Torlacci's P10, Borges Orzo is P11. Gianluca Palmazano, 12th. Sebastian Hirsch is 13th. Tim Bellicky, who was second place, if you remember, in that first one. No, it was fourth place policies in that first one. He is P14. Gutierrez is 15th. They will be the top 15 that will uh, split. Demirbas came out ahead of Demori. And Caserta is back out. Uh, no, so he's out of the race. He's not on pit exit. Here is Jack Badger. They see Jatatis just in the background. Badger just starting to extend that gap. Jatatis has extended his gap over Zoot Weller as well. And can Jack catch Valverde now he's in the clean air? Last time around was two tenths quicker, but that isn't going to be enough this stage of the race, you'd imagine. It's Badger, second place. Here is Move then. Having to defend into the loop. While these two keep fighting, you feel that Torlotti's also in the background might try and get on the back of this pack towards the end. What are these guys lapping? 55-2 and a 55-6. Augustin was a second quicker. Borja Zorzo was a second quicker, as was Palmezano. And they're only two and a half, three and a half seconds behind. There is live stewarding today. So this is going to be an interesting one to see right to the very end. Booth looks like he started to just put a bit of distance between Andre behind him. And needs to if Torlachi is lapping at the pace he's lapping at. So again, Demirbas has got past Sapanian, so that's more points for Sinan to Merbas down the order. That's for 18th and 19th. And here is Sebastian Hirsch with Gianluca Palmisano. That is Palmisano in the red Aston Martin. Sebastian Hirsch in the blue McLaren. Palmisano still trying to keep that inside line up the hill. They come. Hirsch trying to stick it around the outside, can't do it through there. He's going to have to think. Jack Badger took a tenth out of Valverde on the last lap, so gap's coming down ever so slightly, but it's just not enough at the moment. Tokarev right on the back of Zoot Weller on the timing screens. That is a tenth separating them two. Here it is, taking shot with him. And for Tokarev, last lap was half a second quicker than Zoot Weller. Now, looks to the outside, does the McLaren driver as they come up through the S's. Zoot Weller, the black and white Mercedes on the inside. Tokarev, the red McLaren with shop in the all-black Mercedes behind. 
This is for fourth, fifth and sixth in this race. We're at 16 minutes now, so there's about two, three laps at a push left in this one. Valverde's extended that gap to Badger. Palmazano and Hirsch exchanging places. This is looking back from Tokrev, who's up 20 spots in this race. He's got shop right on the back of him. Missing a back bumper, though. His shop lost it at this part of the circuit. All on his own, and he manages to just close in. Look at that closing speed from the Mercedes under the braking, but Tokrev manages to get that back as he puts the accelerator down. Seen Valverde in this position one too many times. He's in that mode of controlling it. Zutwella now defending the inside line from Tokrev. Gives him plenty of space on the outside. Can Tokrev do what Badger did to Jutatus? Up the inside, uphill they come. And I believe Zutwella loses out another spot. Yes, he does. Tokrev moves up to P4. Great overtake there. Now that allows Pascal Schopp to have a look on the rear of the Mercedes of Zutwella. Torres. Lurking in the background as well. What a drive from all these uh, drivers. What a race, should I say. As Tokrev, fastest lap of the race still. That's not being beaten at this stage of the race. It doesn't look like Valverde extended his gap two tenths last time around. But it is Jutatis looking again on the back of uh, Badger. That is two tenths of a second. As is Shop and Zutwell, we're seeing now. 17 and a half minutes gone. And we're nearly... Valverde, should I say, he's nearly halfway through this lap. Here's Jack Badget. Jatatis has a look, and it's nothing more than a look. So we've seen how Jack Badget calmly follows drivers through and patiently waits for an opportunity. Now we get to see the youngster defend. Just dropped a wheel or two on the grass. That's not going to hurt him too much. Manages to keep his Porsche ahead of Jutatis's Mercedes-Benz. Here comes Jack Badger then. Through he goes. On tow. But he comes down the, uh, the straight of the boot. Sidander Mervas, 40 seconds behind Thomas Herzog. You reckon that's his day over for race two? He's going to have to go again in race three. From Gutierrez up, don't forget, top 15 will be inverted for race three, the final race of the day. And what drama it has been here. So Valverde is coming towards the end of this lap, and this will be one more to go as Valverde crosses the line. This is Jack Badger, Valverde's 3.9 up the road. So Valverde is about to start that last lap of the race. Who's this? This is Torres now. Right on the rear wing of Shop. Look, you see the damage to the back of Shop's car. No rear bumper. Now Torres gets a better run out the final corner. He's going to set Shop up for turn one. Downhill, they start to drop. Under braking now. Torres up the inside of Shop. Still side by side. They go. Plenty of respect given. Shop runs out a little wide. And it's still side by side into the S as Torres just in front. And Shop now yields that place. And Torres moves up to P6. He's up 18 spots in this one. Him and Tokarev have had a great race from the back of the pack. They avoided the carnage at the start, and they're being rewarded for great driving now. Berger out of this race, five laps down, but he'll score points for 23rd place. It's not going to help his cause. The more he's 20th as well, he's not really made any much, prog much more progression up through the field. He's on the back of Sapanian, though, so could possibly get 19th. It's just an extra point for him. So this is going to be interesting to see. Jack Badger really having to defend from Jatatis at the moment. And this is the final lap of the race. The time it gets to 20 minutes. So Marcus Valverde is four seconds up the road, who's been in cruise control for most of this race. Looks like he's going to come to win it. Steady now, Marcus. You don't want to make a mistake at this late, late, late part of it. But he comes towards the final, uh, the penultimate corner. Demore, does move into 19th place. Here comes Marcus Valverde then. Very wide, Marcus. Steady now. One to go. And Marcus Valverde is going to take the second race win here. 
and puts himself in it, back in a contention. Jack Badger, great drive from him. That'll be P2. Then it'll be Jatatus. Tokarev will be P4. There's a bit of a race to the line between Zutwella and Torres. Zutwella gets that from Torres. Shop. Then it'll be Muth. Then it will be uh, Andri to take P9 from Augustin Torlacci. Borges Orzo, 11th. Sebastian Hirsch, P12. Gianluca Palmisano, 13th place. Gutierrez is going to come across for P14. And uh, Tim Bellicky, P15. So them top 15 will be inverted for the third and final race. <sighs> well... That was entertaining. That was some excitement. That was fantastic racing. Carnage, great manoeuvres, brilliant stuff done. By my calculations at the moment, Jack Badger is the man who's sitting in the driver's seat for this uh, prize money at the end of the day. Uh, P6 in race one, which would have seen him take home 25 points and then a P2 to take home 29. It would have been Sinan de Merbas, but he got that drive-through penalty. I think he was held thinking it was a stop-go penalty. So four uh, Jack Badger, he's really putting himself in that box window for that 125 euros at the end of the day. So what a race. We've got to all catch our breath because there is still plenty more action to come. 20 more minutes of racing here. The drivers will just have a quick breather before the race finale. Damori, though, caught up in that turn one incident. It was uh, not where he wanted to be, obviously, starting that 15th place. He had to get a good clean start and he didn't do that. He got caught up in a lot of dramas, which has demoted him to 19th place. He, we saw him in the pit lane and that was probably to repair a bit of damage or, or something because he was uh, struggling there. So yeah, it was very interesting to see. The final results, so we can see on the screen now. So it's Marcus Valverde, as we know from Jack Badger. Jatatis, Tokarev, Zutwella, Torres, Shop, Muth. Andre P9, Augustin Torlacci P10, Borges Arzo 11th, Sebastian Hirsch 12th, Palmazano 13th, Gutierrez, and then Bellicky was rounding out the P15. They'll all be inverted and swapped over. Thomas Herzog was 17th before Marco Hack was 16th, Sinan de Merbas 18th, Simon de Mori 19th place, Sapanian P20, Retiani 21st, Kovacs 22nd, Berger 23rd, Hamper P24, Caserta P25, and we haven't yet seen Galtsev out on the circuit. We do have, we have just been told, there is two-minute wait now for the drivers to get underway. So what a day it has been. Don't forget, the Race League drivers will be back in two weeks' time to take on this exact same challenge. Challenge two for the Race League drivers. It'll be the GT4 cars at Watkins Glen once again. And then we get to announce as well. On that week, we get to announce challenge three, which uh, we're all looking forward to hearing what that one could be. I saw some rumours in the in the Discord server, a few ideas floating around that could come, whether it's Challenge 3 or whether it's later in the year. Uh, there's a few ideas floating around in there that look absolutely fantastic at the moment. It's going to be great to see what, the, uh, what happens here, though. But I'm just looking at the points, and for me, I think Jack Badger is the one leading this mini championship, if you will. I think he's the guy who is in the box seat here. Just looking at my notes, I, th I believe he's got the strongest position. Demori won the first race. That was 32 points. 19th last time out was only 12. See, I think Jack Badge has really got himself in a fine position here. I think he's doing some sublime stuff. There is a little two-minute warm-up at the moment for the drivers to just take on w whether they want to be on the circuit, quick toilet break, grab a refreshment, whatever it may be. I tell you now, we're going to need a refreshment after today's race because it is hot in here. It has been a fantastic day of racing at the Watkins Glen circuit. It has been amazing. Looking forward to race three, says UK 2008. We all are looking forward to race three. I do believe it's going to be th fantastic to see what happens in this one. Uh, so we saw a bit of the live steward in as well. We saw some stop-go penalties and drive-through penalties given to drivers in that last race. Obviously, incidents involved. Sinan de Merbas, who was fourth in race one, was 27 points, was second in that race, would have got him 29 points. He'd have been the man in the box seat so far, and he's looked like he's got great pace out there today as Sinan. Now, the question is, and if you're a regular viewer of Racing Unleashed, and I hope we'll get to see a bit more of a better shot of this when we see Sinan's camera, does he wear his gardening gloves at his sim rig at home? We know he wears the gardening gloves in the simulators in the racing lounge at Munich. Has he got them on at home? 
If so, that is going to be absolutely fantastic. I know that we see a lot of the sim drivers in their simulators at home or here in the Apex studio, whether it's at the uh, Racing Unleashed centres as well with the, you know, the proper racing gloves on their hands. Sinander Merbas, gardening gloves he wears. Hey, if any gardening company is out there and wants somebody to represent gardening gloves, Sinander Merbas could be your man. The crit order, though, has been set for race three. It is Tim Bellicchio would be on pole position from Miguel Gutierrez. Gianluca Palmisano, P3, with Sebastian Hirsch. In fourth, Borges Arzo will be P5 on row three alongside Augustin Torlacci. Row four will be uh, Andri. I'm not trying to pronounce his surname. If anybody's wondering why I'm not saying that one, I've, I think I've got it wrong two or three times today. So we're gonna, we'll just stick with Andre. He's P7, Muth will be P8, Shot P9 with G Torres P10, Zutwella P11 and Tokarev P12. <clears throat> Jitatus P13 with Jack Badger P14. Winner Marcus Valverde of race two will be 15th place. Marco Hack will be in 16th with Thomas Herzog P17. Uh, alongside him will be Sinan Demirbas in 18th place. Uh, Simon Demori will be 19th with Sapanian 20. Ritiani 21st. Kovacs 22nd. Berger 23rd. And Hamper 24th. Caserta 25th. And Galtsev 26th. Then. They get underway then. Here is Sinan de Merbas. We can't see if he's got the racing gloves on. Sinan, if you are listening, I hope you've got the gardening gloves on. I'll drop you a DM later. I'll message you later to see if the gardening gloves are on at home like they are in the uh, Racing Unleashed lounges then. So grid order set. Who is going to win this one? Can Jack Badger take home the prize of 125 euros at the end of today? That is going to be the interesting thing here, I want to, I, I reckon. So we're going to see what they can do as they round the final corner for the final time on the outlap. We're about to go green. Look at them all. They're all excited to get going. It is green and go now as they come down towards the 90. Look at how many cars are side by side headed into turn one. All get through cleanly, please. They come through greatly. Don't know there's a spinner. Now there's a bit more contact. I believe it is only two cars off, but there is no nope, few more. And I believe Damori was involved in that one. That could spell the end of his day for Simon Damori, but it is Bellicky who is charging out front. He had a great race one. And now he's charging out front. Gianluca Palmisano is up into second place. G Torres has gained seven places from the start. So has Jack Badger, who is up into seventh place already. And look at them all bunching up in towards the loop for the first time. We've lost Valverde and Zutwella and Gutierrez all in the pits. That is their afternoon done. Was that another spinner there or just a lock up? It was. It was Sebastian Hirsch who's had a moment himself. What a shame for Sebastian Hirschen, but it is Bellicky from Palmisano, from Torres, Borges also running in P4. And you see Jack Badger attacking in the background, not gonna get to see the uh, end of that one. He has got up the inside though of Andre, and he's moved into P6, Jack Badger on a real charge this morning. And side by side, Ratiani and Sinan de Merbas. De Merbas has got points to make up in this race. Down in towards the hill they come, and Sinan, Job done, Damori is out of this race. So Damori's day started so well. Lights the flag victory, it's ended in disaster. Borgia Zorzo is around. Oh, what a shame for Borgia. Not been his day, Palmisano has been overtaken by G Torres and that is Tokarev round the outside as well. And Jack Badger fancies a move on the inside on Gianluca Palmisano. And he has the move done. They're all piling through past Palmisano. Shop's now got him. Shop also has Andre done as well. And Palmisano there. Oh no, he stayed ahead of Shop. Shop side by side. Now gets headed to turn one. Jack Badger is up into fourth. We've only done one lap of this race. Jack Badger flying at the moment. He loved to end his day with a race win. And now look, Palmisano under pressure. That is Andre side by side with him, trying to get past through the S's. There is Augustin Torlacci trying to follow him through as well. Palmisano on the back foot. Demirbas and Hack in the background going at it. We've lost Hamper. We've lost Jatatis from this race as well. They're both in the pits. And Tokarev bouncing over the curb has got a very quick Jack Badger behind him.
but Beliki, two and a half seconds out front after lap one. Great to see Torlachi still ahead of Hax in under Merbas. Pascal shot, drive through penalty, causing an incident at the bus stop. That'll be the loop. And where is Shop? He's currently P5, so that'll end his race. Torlachi's going to be late on the brakes on the inside of Palmisano. Oh, he touches him, spins him round, oh, he's pile up. It's chaos at the heel. Sinan de Merbas has been involved in that as well. He's not got the gardening gloves on. Oh, interesting. And now Torlachi going tooth and nail with Sapanian. Then he's got Muth behind him. And that all came from Torlachi giving Palmisano a little tap on the rear there. Oh, what drama today. Three minutes, 45 gone. Pelicki leads by two seconds from that of Torres. Then it is Tokarev. What a shame Tokarev and Torres had such a terrible race one. They could have been in this fight. Pelicki had a bad race too, though. And Torres. Down towards turn one he comes. Belichir, fastest lap of the race. Torres a little quicker than Tokarev behind. And Badger, well, he's right behind Tokarev. There you see him in the blue Porsche, just behind the red and white McLaren. Jack Badger up 10 places, Sapanian up 13, Berger up 13. What a race, what a race. Being told that the race winner is the older brother of Louis Bellica, who was the overall winner of the Racer League event one back at the Hockenheim ring. He's doing a great job to do what his younger brother did, winning the race. He probably isn't going to win overall after a poor race too. It's this man who's probably sitting, who I believe is sitting in the box seat at the moment. He's got Shop behind him, but Shop has that drive through penalty to his name. Here's Muth on the back of Torlachi. Tokarev drive through penalty. Oh, so Jack Badge is going to be given P3 here. Incident on the third, on this corner they're up to now. Tokarev, drive-through penalty. What a shame. So that'll put Jack Badger back on the podium and will allow him to get on the back of Torres. Shop as well as a drive-through penalty. So will we see both of them come in now? Yeah, I believe Shop, uh, I believe Tokarev, apologies, is coming in. Shop hasn't yet come in to do his drive-through. This is turn one then. So there's Borges, Sozo, Garcia drops the rear all on his own, just collects a couple of cars. I believe Thomas Herzog there looked nowhere to go. Here is Borges, Sozo. That is why Tokarev's got the drive through. Huge shunt into the rear of Borges, Sozo there. Tokarev has done his drive through penalty. Pascal Schopp has not seen Ander Merbas in Palmazano getting a bit close here, but Sin Ander Merbas gets the job done and there was no contact made. Great driving from the pair of them. Sinan moves up into P13 and can now head after Borgia Zazo. To Belicki out front, 2.1 seconds clear of Torres. Torres is a further one second clear of Jack Badger, who's got uh, Andre on the back of him. Shop two tenths off the back of Andre. But Shop has that drive through penalty to his name, I do believe. So has to really get it done this lap. Kovacs gets ahead of Ratiani. That's for 17th and 18th. Just some more points in the bag for him. What a day, what a race it has been here. It Watkins Glen, it's been fantastic to see. And Shop flashing his lights here at Andre. But Shop has got that drive through penalty to do. So the flash of the lights, Augustin Torlachi. Drive through penalty incident at the toe, lap two. That was on Palmisano that we saw. So that's going to drop him from P7. Belicky though now, 1.9 clear of Torres. Jack Badge is just losing out a little bit. They've not got, he's not got the pace of Torres. He's actually got to be careful because Andrew behind, even though he's got uh, shot with him, not no more. Chops him for the uh, drive-through penalty. Torlachi comes straight in for his drive-through penalty as well. Oh, 
Cole just quieting down just a little bit. We can just breathe and relax before the end of this race. Eight minutes gone, 12 minutes left to go. Normally see about 11 laps. We're on lap five at the minute. There is Shop and Torlachi in for their drive-through penalties. Thomas Herzog is going to come through. I don't believe he has, you know. No, Thomas Herzog a bit way uh, further back. Kovacs on the rear end of Thomas Herzog. Mr. Iron Man himself. There's a few Iron Man events, if you uh, remember watching the programme last year. And look at the run that Kovacs has got. You see the damage to the left-hand side door panel of Thomas Herzog possibly hampering him in a straight line. And Kovacs going to look to the outside line at the loop. Here he comes, job done before the loop. Thomas, let him have that one. Just experience for Thomas today. We've lost to Tatis, Hamper, Gutierrez, Utwella, Valverde, Demori, and Caserta from this race. This man hasn't looked back, Tim Bellicky. Absolutely flying, 1.7 clear of Torres, you see there in the background, who is on 1.5 clear of Jack Badger. But Jack Badger doesn't need to win this race, just does need to outscore his closest rival, who I believe would have been Sinan de Merbas. And he's doing that an absolute peach at the moment. He is driving fantastically has Jack Badger all day. 16 years of age, I believe we saw in the comments earlier. What a wise head on young shoulders. So Beliki down in towards turn one now, nine minutes 42 left uh, on the clock. So we've got just all over 10 minutes to go. Good fight between Palmazano and Sinander Merbas. That is within a couple of tenths. And is that Palmisano trying to come back at Sin and I wonder? This is Torres, though. Who, again, if it wasn't for a disastrous race one, Ratiani's in the pit, so I'm not sure what's happened to Ratiani. He's in pit lane. So what a shame for him. Torres bouncing over the chicane here. Andre trying to stick to the back of Jack Badger, trying to close in on Jack Badger. It was a tenth slower last time around. And Demervas has got back out of Palmisano, so that fight now just exchanging a few places. Sebastian Hirsch gaining on the back of Hack as well. Stop and go penalty, Ratiani. That is why he was called to pit lane. Unsafe rejoin, lap two. Tokarev, even though he's had that uh, drive through, still the fastest man out on the circuit. Here is Sebastian Hirsch trying to get on the back of Marco Hack and overtake him. One BMW, one Aston Martin, a little wiggly and a little loose on the back of Hax M4. And Hirsch, through he goes. Easy as you like. Sebastian Hirsch moves up to P8. 4.7 seconds now on the, uh, to get onto the back of Misha Berger. Based on lap times, yeah, a couple of hundredths quicker last time around, but with only seven and a half minutes to go. It's not exactly, sorry, eight and a half minutes ago. It's not exactly where you want to be. Four seconds behind and only gaining a couple of hundreds. Can he now use that clear air to, ex to, to close that gap even more? It's Berger's actually just got ahead of Muth on the timing screens. So, them two's having a little squabble. There they are, side by side. Big wiggle for Misha Berger there. The black and burgundy car. Side by side, we move the grey and green liveried Mercedes AMG GT4. Move tucks in behind, and while these two are squabbling, this could allow Sebastian Hirsch to get onto the rear a little bit. And his move got to come back at him. Ooh, is that a little tap there on the back of Berger's car? Very, very close, both of them to that outside barrier, coming through the loop onto the outer loop now. Different line you see there. Booth takes a much tighter line through Berger, a bit wide, brings it back in. It's so great to see such drama. Bit of a calmer race three than race two. Ratiani's back out on track, but is a lap down to his competitors. Palmazano still trying to advance in under Merbes. Tokarev is trying to stick with them as well. 
Here is Hack, who's not been able to keep with Sebastian Hurst. Porsche is also 2.8 behind him. Here's Tokarev in a bit of a train. You see there just in front, Sinan Demirbas and Gianluca Palmizano. Palmizano, the only Aston Martin Vantage driver today. The Italian trying to hang on in there, looking back from him now. We see that of Tokarev behind. Thirteen minutes forty gone. We're on lap eight. There's about roughly eleven laps in this race. So as we come to the closing stages, gaps out front look pretty equal. But here comes Tokarev, closed up. Didn't think of having a a little lot, a look at the opportunity. He's just patiently biding his time and waiting, maybe for Palmisano to make a mistake. That's probably not going to help Tokarev's. <laughs> Ability to get past Palmazano if you can't see him. Tokarev now though pulls to the outside of the S's as they come around the outside line then. Sinan Demirbas just ahead. Middle of the road. Tokarev right around the outside. They stay side by side. Palmazano tries to keep it there and Tokarev gets the move done. Moves up to P12. Great fight. Palmazano put up a good battle. But Tokarev too strong in the end. Sinan Demirbas trying to get on the back of Hack and Borgia Zorzo. Borgia Zorzo trying to close that gap out front. And we take a look at a few more replays from the race. This is uh, Tokarev into the back of Sebastian Hirsch. And this is Torlacci on Palmazano. This is at the, the toe. That caused a real domino effect there. Ratiani very wide. That's the unsafe rejoin that he got the stop go penalty for. Oh, and actually caused a bit of carnage with a couple of other drivers there. And now, all of a sudden, Tokra, fastest man on the circuit today. He's had fastest lap in most races. He's on the back of Sinan Demirbas. And who is the blue car just ahead of Demirbas, but behind Zazo? It's not there now, so wondering if that was a lap car of Ratiani getting out the way somewhere. So there's Zazo, the green car. Demirbas, the black and red, and the white and red. That is Tokarev, who we're on board with. He's flying all day. He's pulled to the inside line. He's breaking in towards turn one. Lovely. Absolutely lovely. Textbook, that. Tokarev flying out there at the moment. Goes to cover the inside of the S's early doors so that Demirbas can't get the run back at him, and Demirbas doesn't. And now going to hunt after Demirbas can follow Tokarev here and stick with him. They'll catch on to the back of Borges Arzo. Just looking at last lap times again, the front three kind of matching each other. Two tenths, Badger slower than Torres and Beliki. But in terms of fastest man on the circuit so far, that is Tokarev by a country mile. Here is Misha Berger, sixth place. Not managed to pull away from move too bad. Sebastian Hirsch hasn't caught up to Muth at all. In fact, he's lost time. Lost half a second on the last lap. So 16 and a half minutes gone. When Beliki crosses the line, there are probably going to be two laps of this race left to go. Not quite there yet. We approach the 17 minute mark. It is Beliki from Torres, from Padja. Andri, Sapanian, Berger, Muth, Hirsch, Hack, Zazo, rounding out your top ten. Shop's got past Palmazano. They're side by side now. Palmazano's going to have that inside line. Just doesn't get it stopped and turned in and just exchanges paint with Pascal Shop, who flashes the lights immediately. And there's that Palmazano letting him through. Yeah, he's letting him go. That'll probably save a penalty. Now look, look at Tokarev. He is flying out there. Borges is also now under pressure. He goes to that inside line to cover it. I don't think it's going to be enough. Tokarev's going to go right around the outside. McLaren has looked a good car choice here today. Tokarev side by side with Borges also. Is he? 
still just about. They're now fully side by side due to Borgia having that inside line at the first part of the S's. Now Tokarev will have it up the hill. Now Borgia will have it. No, he won't because Tokarev comes in front and Borgia's also down to 11th. Great driving from the pair of them. But it is Vlad Tokarev who goes up into P10. Sinan Demirbas is on the back of uh, Borges Orzo as well at the moment, so he's going to try and come through. There is Sinan. Going to try and stick with them. Nine tenths of a second behind Borges Orzo. Muth is right on the back of Berger as well. That is two tenths. What this could have been today if he didn't have that drive through. For Sinan de Merbas. Here is Berger. Defending from Muth. Muth going to have a look up the inside at the heel. Not close enough. So it was just a look. Just trying to put Muth under some pressure. In the VR headset. For Daniel Muth. For the Nürburgring eSports team. As they come through the left hand of the penultimate corner. They will start their final lap of the race. Tim Bellick is on his final lap. That gap's come down to a second, by the way. Half a second slower than Torres on the last lap. So I'm not sure what happened to Bellick. But he doesn't need a mistake now. Drove a great race. Oof, that is wide. I wonder where iRacing does deem the track limits for turn one. Bellick then. Eight tenths of a second now, so that gap is dramatically closing. Bellicky to Torres. Dramatically closing already. Booth, though, has a great run on Berger up towards the loop chicane. Patient. Patience for Booth at the moment. Gets a great run through. Probably drifts out a little wide through the final part of it. But he gets such a good run through. Bellicky extends that gap back up to nine tenths. Here he is, Tim Bellicky. What a drive, what a performance. Privateer driver. There you see Torres in the background, but Torres hasn't had his number. And it seemed to have been a mistake last time around from Bellicky that's allowed Torres to get this close. Because he's done absolute bits at the moment. So what can Bellicky do here? Got to get these last two corners right. It will be the race three win for Bellicky. He's just got to get the last one correct, and then it'll be game over for Torres in terms of being able to catch him. Bellicky rounds the final corner, and he's going to be the race three winner. Tim Bellicky wins the race. Great drive from him. Torres will take second place. Jack Badger, by my calculations, will be the race winner, the overall winner today. He's P3. Andrew will take P4. Sepanian P5. Berger hangs in there for sixth over Muth. Sebastian Hirsch will be P7, uh, P8, sorry. And then this fight. Hack, P9. Tokarev, P10. Borges Orzo, 11th. Demirbas, 12th. Shop, 13th. Palmisano, 14th. Torlachi, 15th. Ratiani's finished a lap down in 18th place. Kovacs will be 16th and Herzog will be 17th place. What a set of three races that was. By my calculations, I believe that that is the overall win for Jack Badger. So the final results are coming up. And uh, yeah, while the uh, full tables are being calculated, there you see Tim Balicki. Seven tenths of a second in the end from G Torres. Jack Badger. Uh, Andre then P4. Sepanian P5. Misha Berger from Daniel Muth. That was a close fight at the very end. Sebastian Hirsch P8. Couldn't gain on them. Marco Hack <clears throat> from then uh, Tokarev. Borges Orzo. Sinander Merbas. Pascal Schopp. Jean-Luc Palmisano. Augustin Torlacci. Martin Kovacs from Thomas Herzog. And Ratiani there. Then it was Jatetis, Apanian, Valverde, Gutierrez, Zutwella, Damori, Caserta. And we never got to see Galtsev out there on the, on the uh, track today. Huge effort from Jack Badger in the chat. Quality drive from Jack Badger as well. So a lot of the audience getting involved, applauding Jack Badger. Final classification will come in. 
So let's wait and see what they will be at this moment in time. It all looks good if you are Jack Badger. By my calculations, I've worked out that that may be the case so far. Great races. I believe it was sixth in race one, second in race two, and third in race three. So that would give him 29, 28, and 25 points. That's pretty much no one's really going to beat that. We saw that um, Baliki won that last race. Damori had two poor races after the first race winning. He took a lights to flag when he was very, very solid in that first race, but did, wasn't able to get it uh, done in race two, that big contact. And then obviously starting at the back race three, another incident at the start uh, of that one that cost him a few places there. But great racing overall. Fantastic to see the drivers out on the circuit. 25 drivers today. It was fantastic racing. The race league drivers will get their chance in two weeks' time to take on this event. The GT4s around Watkins Glen. So we'll see. We're just obviously waiting for that final classification of the top three. And we'll bring the interviews in of the drivers who are the top three. Points are just being worked out at the moment. But like we said, two weeks' time, it will be the... Uh, race league drivers to take to challenge three there it is look on the 21st of the fourth and the uh, other event on the 20th of the uh, of april will be the road to Ascoria, and i believe this is a uh, a pro event for sim drivers for more of the professional sim drivers to come and take their go at winning a track day at Ascari. so that's going to be fantastic to see in two weeks time so the road to Ascari on the 20th the 21st will be the race league challenge two for them it's going to be fantastic to see what happens here and uh, as we saw we saw the road to Ascari last time out it was really good to see it was a good event in the formula three cars round the uh, valalunga circuit were a brilliant race where alejandro sanchez took that win wasn't able to replicate that on the Sunday, though. Uh, the prize, I, I believe we can show you some of the prizes, prize money for uh, the Assetto Corsa Championship. This starts in September. So if you remember from last year, we, we got underway our, our championship in the racing lounges. There you see the Racer League prize money on the left-hand side. Three and a half thousand Swiss francs for a race win in that Racer League. That goes all the way down to 200. And then it is 15,000 Swiss francs if you win that championship. You've got to beat Michael Smeedle to it. And Alejandro Sanchez, to be fair, because he was close to him all season. If you're in the Challenger League, it is 750 Swiss francs for a race win all the way down to 100. And if you was Yannick Pletcher like last season, who took home the 3,000 Swiss francs uh, in that one last season. That was only three months ago back in January, if you remember the battle for glory and final round of the season where it all took place there. It was fantastic action at the Algarve circuit. Uh, while we still await for these final bits of uh, results to come through, tallies are being totaled up and it's been, uh, we're waiting confirmation for who will be the top three. The drivers as well, I've got to say, in their simulators and wait because they'll be invited in for an interview. A few of the drivers in the chat, apologies, Sebastian Hirsch there. That was tough out there. He's warm. It's been an absolute pleasure watching the three races. Fantastic racing and commentary. Thank you very much, Graham, in the chat as well. It's been a great set of three races. Race League in two weeks' time, as we said, on the 21st. They're going to be brilliant as well. We are awaiting that final confirmation of the points. And when we get them, we will be able to, uh, to tell you who has done what. But I think, by my calculations, Jack Badger is the race winner and will take home 125 euros uh, it will then 75 euros for second place and it is then 50 euros for third and I do have the results in front of me now I do believe these are the correct results just waiting for my producer to tell me in the ear um, they are pending at the moment so so far it is Jack Badger who is the winner <coughs> excuse me uh, then it will be Tim Bellicky second place and Pekka Sapanian will be P3 on points that is what I have in front of me at the moment this is pending if them drivers are listening to the broadcast please do, do, do jump into the interview channel uh, and we'll get a chat with yourselves. These are pendings this is a provisional result uh, if you want to find out the actual result keep your eyes on the social media of Racing Unleashed, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, wherever it may be. Keep your eyes out there for the final result. This is a provisional result at the moment, we are being told. Nothing fully confirmed. So again, Jack Badger, winner. Uh, Tim 
Beliki second place and Pekka Sapanian in third. And we do have the first driver in for an interview. It is Tim Bellake who can hear us now. Tim, uh, second place at the moment overall and a good race win at the very end. Uh, apologies, ladies and gentlemen. We can't quite hear Tim at the moment. Oh, hello? No? Uh, there we go. There he is. Yep. <laughs> Hello. We have you now. Tim, sec uh, second place at the moment overall, uh, but the race win in the third race was a good race for yourself. Yeah, that was very important. I, I, was I, I gave up fighting in the second race, being 14 for 15th, and the crash, wa the crash wasn't worth it. And it was a good I'd race. I'd start pole and then P2. <laughs> It was a good race, one for yourself as well, Tim. You had a great battle with Jack Badger for fifth and sixth for most of the race. He seemed to be following through everywhere you went. <laughs> yeah, the, the, first, the first race was really fun. I was a bit disappointed with Quali because I had my intent decided to drop one of my laps, uh, which cost me about four or five positions. <laughs> but was really happy getting a very good six in the first race. Uh. Obviously, did you enjoy today? Watkins Glen as the circuit in the GT4 cars. Is that? Do you like the track? Do you like the cars? The track is nice. Uh, I don't really usually race GT4s. I usually race pickup, but it was very fun. Like especially the first race. The third race was fun as well, but more tense trying to not mess up and let LA catch up behind. <laughs> Well, Tim, very congratulations on that uh, win at the very end and provisionally P2 at the moment. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Tim, they're very happy with his work. And we can speak with a 16-year-old Jack Badger. Jack, um, no race win today, but the overall win at the moment, obviously, results still pending. You've got to be happy with your day's work today. Yeah, of course. I mean, to be fair, I've kept it clean, and that's the main bit. You don't really win your championship by winning the races. It's just staying consistent. And that's what you did. It was a sixth place race one, second place race two, and a third place in race three. And it was really drivers around you that made their own mistakes or was involved in incidents that allowed you to get through to the front, as well as some fantastic overtaking. Yeah, I've been. I got quite lucky in uh, heat one and two, and heat three definitely lucky with T one. Held it around the outside, but just managed to keep my way through. Just talk us through qualifying because we didn't see outright pace from yourself on your qualifying lap, but your race pace was extraordinary. Uh, okay, well, this is quite a funny one to explain. Uh, I was quite slow for uh, a lot of my laps, but there was one lap in specific where I was going to go, I think, maybe fifth or fourth. But me being me, I just sort of uh, didn't carry enough speed into the last corner, which then the weight distribution said no and went into the wall. <laughs> So, I think that's so well for me. <laughs> well, learning curves all around, but uh, you've got to be happy with today's work. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, I've spent quite a lot of time trying to practice towards this, you know. Uh, obviously, the pace isn't showing you qualifying, but it was definitely showing in the race, so I'm quite happy with this today. Well, Jack, at the moment, provisional P1 for yourself. Congratulations so far. Well done today. Thank you very much. And now we can... Uh, we do not have uh, Sapanian in with us for the interview. So that is the interviews done. And what a day it has been here at uh, Watkins Glen. Fantastic driving from all the competitors. It's action-packed to say the least. Uh, but what a day it has been. Um, as we said, so the 20th of April, we're back live uh, racing Unleashed for the road to Ascari. The 21st of April, we'll be back live for the Racer League to take on Watkins Glen here in Challenge 2, where they get to go for a little bit more prize money for themselves. That is €200 Euros for that win, €150 for second place and €100 Euros for third place. Obviously, the road to Ascari leads to a track day at the Ascari circuit, owned by Fra uh, Francisco Fernandez as well uh, that is absolutely fantastic day of racing we uh, we've been glad to have you all in the comments great to read through some of them as well today great to see so many people in the chat uh, watching live and getting involved with all the action here but that is it for watkins Glen today we'll take it next time as you can enjoy some final highlights of the day goodbye <laughs>